Hey everybody, welcome back to yet another video. I'm your favorite dreadhead and mukbanger, Kamari Christopher Watson, and today we're going to be chowing down on none other than Little Caesars. I got my famous poor man butter sauce, some garlic butter, and I also got this. The extra best most this. Alright, let's dig in. But before we get started, got me some garlic butter. I know garlic butter with garlic butter. We're gonna make it do what it do today, baby. Let's see. Ooh. Look at all that delicious goldiness. Let's say grace, dear God, I want to thank you for blessing us. I pray that you continue to bless us to read and look, so that we may one day be able to bless others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's see. Mm. Mm -hmm. I need a little bit more garlic sauce. Mm. Mm That's good right there. Nice and soggy. I like my piece of soggy with dripping with butter sauce. Mm. Mm. Yeah, crust. Mm. It's crust on pizza, but be that crunchy. So last night, I watched all three parts of the Aaron Hernandez story about the famous, what is it, the England Patriots football player who killed all those people, or allegedly killed all those people. I wasted a good four hours watching that movie, and it's on Netflix if y'all want to check it out. I mean, the whole time they was filming this documentary, nobody stopped to think that maybe he didn't kill those people because he was gay. Like, they tried to make it seem as though his sexuality paid him his part in killing people. No, he just wanted to kill somebody. You don't allegedly kill three people because you're gay. You just don't do that. You don't go out and shoot people after they bump into you or spill a drink on you or kill your sister's or your brother-in-law, your sister's brother or whoever.
because you gay. And I think the entire document, three part documentary, was centered around his sexuality. They gave only minimal coverage about the actual victims he killed. It's like, why is he rehashing this? Y'all didn't say all that when he was alive. Now that this man is dead, all of a sudden he killed him because he was gay. He was a sociopath is what it was. He killed those people because he was just, I don't know. They said it was CTE, which is like a brain degenerative or disorder from being hit so many times of playing football. Um, like he died, they gave his brain a science. And it showed that he had CTE. I don't know, y'all. I'm kind of trying to figure out. And he was saying because, he, because he's closeted, he was in the closet, it made him very angry. You know, the things that made him angry were just laid out in the in the documentary. Like, seriously. He, he was mad because his dad died closest person to him and then shortly after his dad is that his dad died his mama goes and have sex that develops a relationship with his auntie's husband that's why that man was mad mad because he was gay then why did he kill one of his best friends it makes no sense And then they threw this other little boy in there by saying it was his prison boyfriend. And they kept playing prison audio, a prison recordings of him talking about all the gay people in the um in the jail. Like they were around, he was like calling transgender g girls that was in them. It's and days and. And they just kept playing the audio over and over and over again. I don't know. I think it was complete BS. I feel like I wasted a whole three, four hours watching that documentary. Look at all that butter sauce. Look at it. Mm. Yeah. Now, I, even, I get Jesus here. I just be like, praise the Lord. Food is good. And y'all see me like him. So I eat. Understand. Food is so good. Oh. So after being thoroughly disappointed watching that Aaron Hernandez story, I decided to tune in and watch the Kamaya Mobley story.
Now, if y'all haven't heard of this Kamaya, Kamaya Mobley story, it's about this girl who was kidnapped. It's a true story. It was actually all throughout the media. You can go Google, Google it and do your research yourself. Um, I think it was in the 1990s or something. This lady dressed up as a nurse, drove 80 miles from her home to a hospital, pretended to parade around to be a nurse. No one checked for ID. No one checked her credentials. Just She just showed up to work and started working as a nurse. She was in the um, the nursery. Uh, the Nick, well, it's called labor and delivery. I don't know. But she was show, showed up there. Uh, the little girl, she was 15 years old at the time, had a baby. I forget the name. And so she befriended the girl for about a week or so. And one day she just took the baby. Told her the Told the mother that, uh, told the little girl that the baby needed shots. The lady, the little girl was like, okay. Took the baby downstairs and just disappeared. Never came back. So she raised the baby for a little while. And each time, She turned on the news station, they were talking about this baby, baby, one year old. they were talking about baby for 18 years. She kept up with the story. Even though she stole the baby, she kept watching the story. And for 18 years, the biological mother, the one that gave birth to her, had a birthday cake for her. But the thing is, the mother actually gave her a really, really good life. Like she had to want, she wanted nothing. She was poor. The um, her kidnapper, the woman who stole her, actually had married a preacher, of all things. Can you imagine being 16 years old, finding out that your mama ain't really your mama, and that your mama stole you, and the way that she found out, they were sitting at their favorite diner, eating, and the waitress came up, and pretty much said she was pregnant, and she was getting ready to quit working, so Kamaya a.k.a. Alexis, who, her real name is Alexis, Kamaya's the name that her, her kidnapper gave her. Pretty much told Kamaya, a.k.a. Alexis, and she was getting ready to quit. It was her last day. She was pregnant. She can't do it no more. So Alexis asked for a job and she can have it. They were like, yeah, you've been here so much. We know you. You come on and get the job. She's like, I get you a uniform, or you need your social security card or birth certificate. That when kidnapped mama got worried. She was like, nah, baby, you cannot take this job. And she just stares. You know like, why I can't take the job? She's like, I really want this job while I can't tell you. So they go sit in the car. She's all excited after her mama finally agreed. And then she was like, well, you can't take this job, baby. I'm sorry. 
So the girl again asked, like, why can't I have this job? You just said I could. Well, her mama said, well, I got something to tell you. And finally told her that she had stolen her from the hospital from her biological mama when she was a newborn. And that just tore that little girl's world apart. So for two years, Kamaya kept that secret to herself till finally they told the preacher which is the kidnapper's husband what happened and he was really upset but he said I decided to marry so I'm going to stick with it A few weeks, a few months later, she finally decided to tell her sister because she was sitting there at the table all depressed, just looking down and sad and and whatnot. And her sister was like, what's wrong with you? Why are you looking like you lost your best friend? And so she was talking about... um why she wanted to work and how she spoiled and whatnot. And the sister like, yeah, I thought you was allergic to work. And she was like, no, I can't work. How can I work if I don't have my birth certificate and all that? And she was like, wait, why your mama can't give you your stuff? So she finally broke down and told her sister what happened. And her sister was like, I don't know what I would do. Or somebody took my baby. Whole time. She was breaking out crying. I was like, oh, I feel so sad for her. So one night she's on Facebook. On her laptop. Um, cyber stalking her biological family. Going through pictures. Seeing if she missed. If they missed her. If they... Just carried on life without her. And so she found the phone number on Facebook and she called. And when her biological mother picked up, she hung up the phone. So her mom's biological mom was sitting on the couch watching TV. And she just looked at the phone and she was like, oh, that's weird. No, no, look, when you get a phone call, something happened, you like, okay. Mm. Y'all, hey, how did you piece of talking with me in my mouth already? So, like, Maya goes on about her life. Everybody's happy. And you know, every now and then she look at her mama like, I can't believe you did this to me. Like, I can't believe you stole me. Her mama's like, what? You want to talk about something? Baby, I know I did what, what, what I did was wrong. But it is what it is. You said you was going to forgive me. Let's move past it. I love you and I'm going to always be your mama. So they moved past it. One day they sitting at the park. One day Kamaya or Alexis is sitting at the park. And she's with a bunch of friends sitting with her boyfriend. And she gets a phone call. And it's her biological mother on the other end. And her biological mother says... Happy birthday, Kamaya. No, happy birthday, Alexis. And she says, wait, how do you know it's my birthday? And she hung up the phone. Well, <gasps> Jesus. I'm going to take all my spell. Y'all saw that? 
uh, um, she was like, how do you know it's my birthday? So she ended up hanging up the phone. And, um, the biological mom calls her biological dad. And she was like, I found Kamaya. So eventually, biological mom gets in contact with the FBI and all those people. And so... Alexis' sister was sitting in the park one day with her baby. FBI rolls up on it like, hey, we got questions about um about your sister Kamaya. We like to ask you some questions. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Oh, you Three slices of pizza left, y'all. I'm not how my beard a crumb catcher one day. <laughs> I'm so upset. Or how you just go feel somebody else's baby? But the ironic thing is, the kidnap mom was like, listen, I know you upset with your biological family. But you got to give them a chance because what I did to them wasn't fair. It wasn't right. So just give them a chance. I know you think I'm just going to always be your mama, and I am. But maybe just try to get along with them. But let me back up to what had really happened before that. So after they talked to the biological sister, the biological sister and pull, roll up on her in the, in the park with her baby, Kamaya ended up getting in contact with the FBI. So they cut the scene to Kamaya and her kidnapped mom walking through the park, having a nice talk, and Kidnap mom basically said, go ahead and stay with your boyfriend for the night. Come back in the morning. I'll have a big breakfast for us, babe. So, the next morning, the FBI goes to kidnap mom's house. And basically, arrests her while she's making tea. She didn't even bother to turn around. She knew they were coming. So she sent um, Kamaya to go stay with her boyfriend. Now this is what pissed me off. FBI get to the boyfriend's house. Find out what she is. She get, they get to the boyfriend's house. They kick in his door. Looking for uh, Kamaya. Asking her if she's okay. Like she's just the world's most kidnapped girl in the world. Which at the time she was. But like she was just in imminent danger. So the, F, the lead FBI agent on the case, she walks in and she's like, whose house is in? He was like, this is my house. She looks around. She's like, uh, I doubt this is your house. He was like, this is my parents' house. They ain't even home. Like, what are you talking about? And so she is just rude. 
she's talking down to both Kamaya and him and um I guess the sheriff or the guy in charge of the kidnap division he was like I've been on this case for 18 years we've been looking for you it's like your biological mom has been waiting for this for 18 years can you just come down to the um police station with us and she was like y'all ain't gonna let me put on my clothes y'all just barging here like this I don't want to see them he was like please they've been waiting on this for 18 years so eventually you know she goes and you know she well before that she goes to the prison and sees her kidnapped mom lord her kidnapped mom was like just go see your biological family. I know you don't want nothing to do with them. I'ma always be your mama. Just go see your kid, your um, biological family, and dr just try to give them a chance. Mm -hmm. So she does it. Um, everything is not what it's supposed to be. They have a press conference of them actually reading. And you know, the biological mama, she's just excited to have her baby back. It's been 18 years. She can see her baby. Kamaya, she's like standing off. She's like, wait a minute. This is foreign. It's faithful to me. I know you my biological mom, but I don't know you like that. But she gives later her up. She does an interview. Right there, press conference. And she says, I'm just trying to figure everything out. Is that I miss my mom. I know what my mom did. She made one mistake. But she's still my mom and I love her. So. They're watching it. The, um, Kamaya. And her kidnapped family. Sitting on the couch watching it. Watching the news. And watching her talk. While everybody's watching it. It's airing on national TV. Kamaya gets a call. From her biological mom. And her biological mom says. I have to I wait on you for 18 years. After that lady kidnapped you. And all you can say is you love your step, your kidnapped mom. What about me? I was like lady. This girl really don't know you like that. And you pressing her that damn hard. It's like give her time to adjust. Um, and she really came for the girl like how dare you speak so highly of her but we your real family we standing right here excuse me so Kamaya ended up going to see her mom in prison she's working real hard she's Doing everything she got to do. She telling her how hard her life is and she ain't been there. But still, even in prison, Kamaya is telling, um, no, the kidnapped mom is telling Kamaya to, you know, give your family some time. Try to bond with them even more. You know, they are your real family. I'm your mama. But I'm always going to love you. But just try to give them some time. She was like, you all I know. You all I need. I don't need them. She was like, Kamaya, just give them some time. And so Kamaya really did try. So Mother Day rolls around. Kamaya goes back to the prison. You know they talk and they only have 15 minutes to talk. And kidnap mom asked, um, why you didn't call me on Mother's Day? Well, Kamaya said, well, I didn't know, like, who to call or who to talk to. My nose itching. She was like, I didn't know who to call, who to talk to. Um, no, she didn't say that. What'd she say? She said, I just didn't know how to feel or something, she said, around that nature. And she was like, I was just trying to give you some time. Kamaya ended up. Hold on. Give me some more garlic butter. Ooh,
So now Kamaya ended up going to have dinner with her biological mama. Whew. Baby, that dinner did not turn out as well as it was. The biological mama said, well, what you got me for Mother's Day? Kamaya said, what I... Biological mama looked at Kamaya, aka Alexis, which is what the biological mama named her. She said, I bet you had enough money to sit in your, sit in your prison mama some, something for Mother's Day. I said, why are you, you the biological mama, why you keep coming after your daughter like that? Like you just straight up disrespecting her at this point. So Kamaya is not. She ain't feeling her biological mama at all. She's like, why she keep coming at me? But eventually they make it to the trial or to the sentencing. Because you know you have to go to a trial to kidnap somebody. And they basically gave her. Got kidnapped about 23 years in prison. 18 years, one for every year. Kamaya was uh, kidnapped. Plus five years consecutive for uh, um, breach of custody or something like that. And all of it was to run concurrent or consecutive or something like that. I don't know legal terms. And. Yeah, she got 18 years in prison. Which I think is fair. Kamaya mama wanted, um, biological mama wanted her to have the death penalty, but. <coughs> Excuse me. Wanted her to get the death penalty, but. I don't know. I think that was too much to ask for, but. So yeah, I'm going to go home for my mom's store. She still loves her mama. She's still getting to know and getting used to having two families. Hmm. My dogs are gonna have a good snack tonight. All these bread crusts, cause I don't eat that. He's saying 30 minutes, almost. Yeah, so she's trying to balance her time between biological mama, biological family, and A kidnap family because she still loves them and I get it but yeah that's how I ended my night I should have got me some more napkins. Ooh, I'm full.
Yeah. So if y'all like these TV reviews or TV show reviews, when I eat, drop a comment, let me know. Mm. I'm already so sick of this Trump impeachment trial here. I don't trust the Democrats or the Republicans. I don't know who I'm going to vote for this election. I don't know. Maybe I'll vote for a dog or something. You know how they make dogs the mayors of city? Maybe we need a dog for a president. Mm, no. No. I think we just got so much in the world, other in the world to worry about. I vote every election, every primary, but this year I don't know who I'm voting for. I don't know. Maybe I'll vote for Megan McCain or Oprah. I think that's a good choice. They ain't ready for president. <laughs> I know. Ooh. Let me close this box. y'all give me your thoughts and opinions if you watch the movie let me know or if you watch any of the movie the Angel Hernandez story or the Kamaya Mobley story and if you like these re mini reviews that I do let me know if you want to see more mukbangs and you got any requests let me know comment like and subscribe I will see you guys next time see you later